Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week I'm going to talk about another uh, utility that you can use with your server and it's a program called Little Snitch. Now Little Snitch uh, has been a program that's been out for a while and uh, it's originally been set up to help you monitor uh, programs that phone home. So in other words, any program or process on your system that actually dials back over the internet to another source. Little Snitch originally was set up to intercept that and uh, then it asks you whether or not you want to allow that connection or not and it was great it's really great for spyware and that kind of stuff where uh, people are collecting information on you and those kinds of things and it just really makes you aware of that and you can block certain connections you don't want to have happen uh, to keep your internet uh, keep your information free from the internet now with this new update to Little Snitch 3, uh, they also add a built-in firewall uh, monitoring into the process as well. So that Little Snitch now monitors both incoming and outgoing processes. And so it's really a great piece of software. It gives you little, uh, little hints and tips, has a great network monitor and things like that, uh, profiles, all kinds of different things. And so it's a really good supplement uh, as you're trying to keep track of your network and with the server you want to make sure you know kinda of what's happening with your incoming connections and outgoing especially if there are people trying to ping your server and and those kinds of things that we've talked about before so it's another tool to use kind of in this whole firewall security side of things so I thought I would cover it so you go to the website here and you can purchase it uh, if you want to if I just click the buy now button uh, you'll see that a single license is thirty four ninety five uh, or if you upgrade it from version 2, 1695. So it's, uh, it's reasonable. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to download uh, the software here. I'm just going to come here and download uh, the uh, actual DMG. And so it's going to go and start the download process. And now I've already downloaded it myself. So I'm going to stop this from downloading and just double click on here and we're going to install it. Uh, let me pop this down. So installation is simple. You just click this little installer here. Uh, it asks if you're sure you want to do this. Uh, it says it's going to install. You click continue. Uh, it does require a restart to make it happen. Uh, so we're going to accept the terms and then put in your credentials because it is going to install uh, software on there. And now it's going to copy the files, update boot caches, and all those kinds of things. And then it will ask us uh, to reboot. So I'm going to let this load and then uh, we'll see what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so it's already loaded. Everything's ready to go. So it says restart now. So I'm going to click the restart button and I'll come back after my computer's restarted. Okay, here we are. Uh, now that the restart has happened, I get this screen right here that tells me that my computer's been restarted with little snitch and it's running in uh, what's called permissive mode. And so what that is is that's every time it restarts, it'll kind of uh, reset itself, let things in. Uh, basically because it has a firewall built in, if it, it put everything in place it could lock you out of some services. So I can open up the configuration if I want to. But What I'm going to do first, I'm going to focus on the network monitor in this particular uh, tutorial. So let me just say not now. Now what you'll notice right away all of a sudden is different programs and things on my computer will create this pop-up window. And what it's going to ask is whether or not I want to allow certain connections to happen. And so you can see here that uh, Cobook, which is a piece of software that I use that's uh, been started, wants to connect uh, to my Twitter account. Okay, now that's something that I had set up uh, already. And it tells me the port that it wants to connect over. Now I can look and see more details if I want to. It'll even give me the IP address, uh, reverse DNS, um, all kinds of information uh, on here in terms of uh, what it's trying to do. Uh, now I can make several selections down here. I can say to allow any connection from this program. I can say to only allow it on this particular port. I can say to uh, only uh, to allow only Twitter's API. Uh, now if you notice I hover over this I have a drop down. I can also put the entire domain of Twitter so that I answer it once and say hey whenever Kobuk wants to go to Twitter that's fine. I don't care. Everything, everything will be fine with that. Uh, or I can say only this API or the domain of Twitter, again same option, and only on this port. So I can make those combinations. So I can make a decision to see it. Now I can also say uh, let it happen until I quit, until I log out or restart for a certain amount of time, maybe only once. Uh, I can set that up how I want to. 
and or I can just say forever. And so what I'm going to say is I'm going to say forever because this application is going to do that all the time. And I'm really going to say any connection because anything that this program wants to do, I'm fine with. And I'll say allow. Now, one thing you need to be aware of with Little Snitch is that these pop-ups are going to happen quite a bit at the beginning. Now, it might be frustrating when you start, but what you're doing is basically just training uh, the software to know what you want to allow in and what you don't want to allow in, okay, both for incoming and outgoing. And once you've done that, then these things slowly go away and they don't come up as often as you want unless you've set rules and things that you want to see them. So I'll click allow. Now you can see the next one comes up, that Alfred comes up, another program I use. So again, I'll do forever on any connection for this one. And you're going to go through this process uh, every time that uh, that you do this setup because that's just how uh, this works out. Again, uh, again, any connection for mail, yes, that's fine. Uh, Fantastical, any connection. And you can see how this will work, right? I'm going to keep doing this Dropbox. I'm fine that Dropbox goes anywhere. And right now it's just building, you know, its trust. You know, what is it that you want me to do? And so uh, I just keep going through that process until all of these things are up and running. So now all my open software has gone through that. Now if you'll notice one of the things that gets installed right up here in the corner you'll notice this little area here these little bars and if I hover over it I get this network monitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this network monitor over here and you can see it's asking me for another program so forever on that one as well that's my backup. And so here's the little snitch monitor. Now with the monitor itself you'll notice a couple of things. First of all I've got all of the different uh, pieces of software and system applications that are um, accessing my network showing here and it's showing who's accessing what where and uh, all, all of that in a list right here down below I've got a network monitor that's telling me you know what's happening right how are the different uh, programs going and so I've got the uh, upside which is the red is what's being uploaded and the green and that's that's being what's downloaded and so it tracks the activity over a time period here and uh, which is nice just to see how much is in going how much is outgoing for me like I said up here gives me all the different applications that uh, have access uh, to the network or have, or have attempted you'll notice the ones that show uh, in the white here are ones that are currently connected uh, the ones in the kind of gray scale they've connected in the past or tried to connect it and they're no longer available right they're no longer live so you can see I got a few things that are live uh, and I got a bunch of things that aren't now what will happen is is I've got the ability if you look at this little box here is I can sort by last activity right and that means that uh, the the last thing that's happened is going to be on the top or I can sort by traffic amounts so whatever had the most traffic and you notice I get this nice little graphic here that again shows me how much is going uh, being downloaded and how much is being uploaded uh, or the other way around this is down this is up and so you can see the different things by just the bars here how much was uploaded or downloaded and this is sorted now based on activity so the most uh, that was done now I can come in here I can sort by process and that'll change everything as well so that the process kind of flips it over and now I can see which process is doing what I can also sort by host name and so that again is by whatever host name is uh, where, where the information is coming from so it gives me a lot of flexibility a lot of ability to sort of sort those things and take a look at it uh, so I'm gonna go back to last activity because you'll start to see as things come in and out these different things will move up the chain now let's take a look I also have the ability to uh, save uh, to make a snapshot now what this does let me just click make a snapshot what this does is you'll notice now I've got an identical window here let me move this over and it says snapshot on it and what I did was is I just took a snapshot of all the information that's in this network monitor and so the beauty of that is is I can come back later because this can only this will only store uh, you know like the last uh, hours worth of activity because you can see things continually moving in and out of here it stores a certain amount well if I was having problems I was having someone trying to access my server I want to figure out what was going on and I wanted to track that information I could create a snapshot and save it and it will allow me then to do some analysis on some of the things that are happening in in my network you know as I've got you know Dropbox trying to you know access it I could see what servers are actually uh, trying to do this access and maybe I want to go in and take a look at it or if I had certain uh, IP addresses that were trying to uh, SSH into my server for instance or uh, do a screen share you come in on VNC I could see what those particular uh, IP addresses were and get an idea of what's happening so it really makes it convenient to be able to have this and then I can save it um, save this actual snapshot and then keep it and I can use it to look at it later but right now I'm just gonna uh, put it down and so you can see it'll ask if you want to save it or not 
and I can say save or not save. I'm not going to save this one, so I'm just going to let that one go. So let me just move this monitor back over. Now, um, as you can see, you can see things are kind of you know rolling along here, uh, continuing to give me that network. Now, the other thing I've got is I've got the ability to view that bottom piece or not just by clicking this right here. Now, I can also get more information on some of the different things that are going on. So if I wanted to, uh, for instance, let's say... Uh, photo stream. If I wanted to get more information on it, I can just click this I here and again, let me move this over. You can see it brings up a window that tells me what's going on with my photo stream agent. It tells me where it's located, uh, who the user is, tells me how many servers are accessing it, and then it gives me connection stats, right? What port it connected on, which is 443, which we know is a secure uh, internet port, so it went over SSL. Uh, the total traffic, how many kilobytes up, how many kilobytes down whether it's connected right now, yes or no, uh, the first activity, how long ago it was, the last activity, and then con connects, how many were successful and how many were blocked. And so it gives me a little bit more information on what's happening with each of these services so that I can do some analysis. And one more thing to show you here, uh, you noticed that it would be before when I hovered over this, I got this little uh, orange area here. If I just click on that for any of these, what it'll do, I'll just click on it, and what happens is it comes up here on the network monitor, monitor and it says, okay, what other things do we have going on this particular port, and let's put them in order. And so it allows me to do some searches by this particular protocol, and I can search the process, uh, I can search the host name, IP address, all those kinds of things, uh, status connected, you know, which ones are connected. Um, so I've got, a, I've got the ability to sort through the different things up here uh, to kind of limit it. But I just wanted to show you that when I, when I click on these various ports here, uh, it'll do a search and say, here's what is actually using this particular TCP port. And so it makes it good for kind of troubleshooting to figure out, okay, who's using what uh, and what service where. And it makes it, uh, makes it really nice. Let me just uh, put this back down. Let's just go back over here to... Uh, to photo stream. And so as you can see, it's a pretty helpful tool uh, just to see what's kind of going on in your network. Uh, so what will happen is, is, as you can see over here, you have little bars over here. As things are going up and down, uh, you'll see these different uh, bars move. So right there, you can see now my ba online backup just showed up. And you can see this bar says, hey, it's go here's what's going up. As things are going down, it would show that as well. And as these things continually interact, it will show how much they're interacting on the side here with whether it's going up and down. And you notice up here on the monitor, it's doing the same thing. So it's a nice thing to have up there because you can start to see the activity and things that are coming in and out of your server. And one last thing I want to show you is just down below with this gear is I can actually uh, change the range of this graph here. I can go from to last minute. Uh, so what happened, you know, 12 minutes ago in the last minute, again, that gives me a little too much, all the way up to a 60-minute time range. So in the last hour, what's happened? And so it does allow me to kind of sort it. And if I wanted to, I can kind of manually do this as well. If I want to get a better shot at it, you know, kind of zoom in and out. And so uh, as you can see, this is a really helpful piece of software to monitor your server and the things that are going on. And it combines not only uh, a built-in firewall, and I'll show you how you can configure that in the next screencast, but it also includes the ability to monitor what's phoning home. So what's going out from your computer, not just sort of what's trying to come in. So uh, that's all I have for this week. Uh, I'll continue the uh, next week with the second part and show you how to configure it. Uh, but I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.